Hello. Previously, we have covered first order circuits, which contain one energy storing element, a capacitor or an inductor. Now we will focus on circuits with two energy storing elements, circuits which either have two inductors, two capacitors, or one inductor and one capacitor for energy storage. Circuits with two energy storing elements are called second order circuits because mathematically they are being represented by second order differential equations. And we will learn how to find the characteristic equation of these second order differential equations. And using these characteristic equations, we will find the natural response of these differential equations which describe the behavior of second order circuits. A second order circuit is represented by a second order differential equation in the following form, where alpha is the damping factor, omega zero is the resonant frequency, Ft is the input to the circuit, it might be a voltage or current, and Xt is the output of the circuit. The order of the differential equation that represents a circuit is equal to the number of irreducible capacitors and plus the irreducible inductors in that circuit. For example, a second order circuit might contain one capacitor and one inductor, two capacitors or two inductors. Here we have the parallel RLC branch and we have two energy storing elements which cannot be reduced, one inductor and one capacitor, and this is the second order circuit. Here we have the series RLC branch and we have L and C in series which cannot be reduced and this is another second order circuit. And here I have two inductors which cannot be reduced because they are neither in parallel or in series with each other and therefore this is also a second order circuit. How do you find differential equations for second order circuits? As always, we write the KCL and KBL equations for that circuit. For instance, here we have a parallel RLC branch with two irreducible energy storing elements L and C. And here I will write the KCL for this top node V. The current over the resistor will be going out, the current over the inductor will be going out, and the current over the capacitor will be going out and to this node we will have the current IS from the current supply entering that I will write to the right side and to the left side I will write VR plus I plus C dV over dT because the current over a capacitor is given as C times dV over dT and I have one more equation here I can write the voltage over the inductor as V is equal to L dI over dT. Merging 1 and 2, I end up with this equation here, which is a second order equation because dV over dT is equal to L, the second derivative of I with respect to T. And in order to find the current as a function of time, I need to solve 3. And in order to find the voltage V of node V, we need to solve the equation 2. This method of obtaining differential equations for a second order circuit is called the direct method. As of now, we still did not learn how to solve the circuit. The only thing we did was to extract and find the differential equation. In the previous example, we found the differential equations for a parallel RLC branch. Now we will see what is the procedure for finding uh, the differential equations uh, for any circuit. And this method is called the direct method. Firstly, we identify the state variables. For a second order circuit, we will have two state variables, which will be the capacitor voltages and or inductor currents. In general, in dynamical systems, a state variable is a variable set which represents the energetic behavior of that system with the minimum number of variables. Then we are writing a first order differential equation for the first 
state variable as a function of the two state variables, then we are writing a second differential equation in the form of dx2 over dt as a function of the first variable. And we are substituting 2 into 1 to get an equation only in terms of x2. And after we do this, uh, we just uh, solve it using some different methods. In the previous example, the state variables were x1 was equal to v and x2 was equal to i, the inductor current. Now let us find the differential equation for the series RLC case. As you can see, we have two energy storing elements, L and C, which are in series with each other. The voltage over the inductor will be L dI over dt. The voltage over the capacitance, let us write it as V. And the voltage over the resistance will be VR is equal to R times I. And when we write this uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, we have L dI over dt plus V plus Ri is equal to the voltage source Vs. And in addition to this, we can write the equation for the capacitor in the form of I is equal to C dV over dt. By substituting the second equation into the first equation, we obtain the equation 3, which is a second order equation. And we can rewrite this as with a unit coefficient of 1 in front of the highest uh, derivative term is this equation number 4. So in order to find the voltage over the capacitor, we can solve 4. And after we obtain the voltage as a function of time, we can simply solve the equation 2 by taking the derivative of the voltage and multiplying it by the, uh, the capacitance value. And that way we will obtain the current I. Now we will learn the operator method for deriving second order circuit differential equations. Here we have a, a second order circuit because we have two inductors which cannot be reduced. And we will solve this question using the mesh current method. Let me write the mesh equation for the first loop for I1. L1 times dI1 over dt plus R times I1 minus I2 is equal to 0. No, it's not equal to 0. It is equal to Vs. And for the second mesh, I can write similarly L2 times dI2 this time over dt plus this time R times I2 minus I1 is equal to 0. Now I see that we are given the numerical values of the resistors uh, and the inductor values. Uh, so let me just plug in those values and I obtain my equation here as dI1 over dt plus uh, I1 minus I2 is equal to Vs. This is my first equation. And my second equation will be similarly, I will have 2 times di2 over dt plus r is equal to 1, i2 minus i1 is equal to 0. And then this is the second equation. And now we will use this equation 1 and 2 to learn the operator method for deriving circuit equations. Now I have the mesh current equations here, equations 1 and 2. Now we will introduce a new operator called the differential operator, which is S is equal to D over DT. So basically, that algebraic variable S will denote the differential operation. So we will know why we can do this when we study Laplace transform in detail in the future. But for the time being, trust me that this approach works. Using the differential operator, di1 over dt will simply become s times i1 and di2 over dt will become 2 times s times i2. And I can write equation 1 according to like this and equation 2 according to like this. 
Now I will solve equation 3 and 4 algebraically to come up with some expressions and afterwards uh, employ the inverse differential operator to come up with the differential equations. From 4 I can write I1 is equal to in parentheses I2 times uh, 1 plus 2s. I can plug this into this expression then I will have I2 s plus 2s squared plus I2 1 plus 2s minus I2 is equal to Vs. And if I solve this further, I take everything into I2 parentheses. 2s squared plus 3s is equal to Vs. From here I get uh, 2s squared will be 2 times d second derivative of i2 over dt plus 3sI2 will become 3 times di2 over dt is equal to ds. So this is how I have obtained the differential equation using the operator method. Now you might wonder how we will find I1. By solving the equation which I found, this equation, I will have an expression for I2. I can use this equation in order to find I1. Accordingly, I1 will be equal to I2 plus D2 times DI2 over DT. I will have an expression for I2 with respect to the time. Basically, in order to find I1, I will write the expression plus 2 times the derivative of the expression, and I will have both variables solved. Now we need to find the differential equation for this circuit. I have two inductors which cannot be reduced, uh, so I will use the mesh current method. So I will write the mesh 1 as 8 times I1 plus uh, 2 di1 over dt plus 4 i1 minus 4 i2 is equal to vs. Let's simplify this a little bit more. 2 di1 over dt plus 12 i1 minus 4 i2 is equal to vs. Mesh 2. Similarly, how will I write this? I have a 1 Henry over there di2 this time over dt plus this time 4 i2 minus 4 i1 is equal to 0. And now I guess I can use operator theory to find the differential equations. All right, how did I define the differential operator? S is equal to D over DT. So wherever I will see the first derivative, I will write this. So according to the form mesh one, I will end up having 2SI1 plus 12I1 minus 4I2 is equal to Vs. Similarly, for the second equation, I will write S times I2 plus 4I2 minus 4 i1 is equal to 0. If I solve this equation, second equation for uh, i1, I end up at, with i1 is equal to s plus 4 times i2 divided by 4. And I can take and then plug into this equation and I will end up with 2 s plus 12 times s plus 4 divided by 4 times i2 minus 4i2 is equal to vs. I can write this as 2s squared plus uh, 20s plus 48 minus 16 i2 is equal to 4vs. This I can simplify further uh, and write it as 2s squared plus 20s plus uh, 
I2 is equal to 4 Vs. And let's divide everything by 2. S squared plus 10S plus 16. I2 is equal to 2 Vs. And I can write this as a differential equation. Second derivative of I2. D second derivative of Y2 over DT squared plus 10 times DI1, DI2, sorry, over DT plus 16 times I2 is equal to 2VS. Let's write here 2 times V subscript S. And this way I found my second order differential equation for this system. Of course, I can just use this equation here in order to find I1 after I solve this equation for I2. We have so far covered two different ways to obtain the second order circuit differential equations, the direct method and the operator method, but still we don't know how to solve these. So, in general, a second order differential equation can be represented using this uh, equation a2 times d2x over dt squared plus a1 times dx over dt plus a0 times x is equal to some type of forcing function. It might be some type of input to the system. In general, a2, a1, a0, these coefficients are related to a combination of RLC values in the circuits. And Ft is the input from a voltage or current source, and Xt is the output of this circuit. In general, as it was the case with the first order circuits, the re response of the system, the complete response of the system is given by the natural response plus the forced response. The natural response satisfies the unforced differential equation when the input is equal to zero, and it is the response of the system due to the initial conditions. And the forced response satisfies the equation with the forcing function Ft, but not taking into account the initial conditions in the circuit. For the differential equation 1, let us propose the solution Xn is equal to a times e to the power of st. Let's take the derivatives of dxn over dt, which is a times s times e to the st. And let's take the second derivative of this expression, which will be a s squared times e to the st. If I take these expressions and put into the equation 1, I get equation 2. And since I know that a times e to the power of st is equal to xn, the natural response of the circuit which we have proposed, we can write this equation simply as this. Now here, one trivial solution of that equation is xn is equal to 0, but this is not what we are looking for. The other solution will be given by the polynomial, which we call as the characteristic equation. And based on this second order polynomial, we will get two roots, S1 and S2. And these two roots will govern the dynamic behavior of the system for the initial conditions. So the characteristic equation is a second order polynomial. And for second order polynomials, we have closed form solutions in the form of S12 is equal to minus a1 plus minus square root of a1 square minus 4a2 times a0 divided by 2a2. This equation might have two distinct roots, two overlapping roots, and two complex conjugate roots. And when there are two distinct roots, the natural response of the system will be in this form. So basically, the same form of the exponential functions which we have proposed, but those exponential functions have the two different S1 and S2 values in the exponent. We will find the other unknowns, A1 and A2, using the initial conditions of the energy storing elements. There are some special cases when S1 is equal to S2, 
and or S1 and S2 are complex numbers as conjugate pairs. We will learn those in the next lecture. Now we will find the natural response of unforced parallel RLC circuit. Why this circuit is unforced? Because there is no source in this circuit. The circuit consists of one inductor, one resistor, and one capacitor, and there are no current or voltage sources. Therefore, this unforced parallel circuit will only have a natural response, and the differential equation which will describe the behavior of the system will be second derivative of voltage, 2 alpha times the first derivative of voltage, and uh, omega 0 squared times uh, voltage is equal to 0. If we write the KCL at the top node, the current going out of the node to, uh, through the capacitor will be equal to C dV over dt. The current over the resistor will be V over R, and the current over the inductor will be 1 over L times the integral of V d tau from 0 to t. And here also we need to take into account the initial condition because there will be some amount of current passing through this uh, inductor at t is equal to 0 is equal to 0. If we take the derivative of this expression, we end up with the second derivative uh, of uh, the first expression, and then uh, this integral disappears and we end up with the equation 3. If we utilize the differential operator, we arrive at the characteristic equation in the form of s squared plus 1 over rc times s plus 1 over lc is equal to 0. Now we will see how to solve this characteristic equation. The characteristic equation is a ordinary second order polynomial and we can remember how to solve these second order uh, polynomial equations here. And according to the result is S1 and 2 is equal to minus 1 over 2 RC plus minus the square root of 1 over 2 RC squared minus 1 over LC. If S1 is not equal to S2, then we will have the following solution. Vn is equal to A1 times E to the S1T plus A2 times E to the S2T. And the root of this equation can be written as S12 is equal to minus alpha plus minus square root of alpha squared plus minus uh, omega zero squared. Basically, we can write the terms in terms of the damping factor and also the resonant frequency. So the damped resonant frequency of the system is defined as Omega d is equal to square root of v0 squared minus alpha squared. Now, when we look at this equation, we observe that there might be three cases. If alpha squared is greater than omega 0 squared, then we have an overdamped response. If alpha squared is equal to omega 0 squared, then we will have two overlapping poles at minus alpha and we have a critically damped response and if alpha squared is less than omega zero squared then we will have a complex s1 and s2 and we will have an underdamped response let's see how these responses look like as you can see if the system has an underdamped response we see oscillations we have an initial overshoot and later the system uh, goes to the steady state value for a step response. If the system is critically damped, the system response is the fastest it can be without making any oscillations. And if the system is overdamped, the system behavior is governed by the, dominated by the slowest pole of the system and therefore the system response is sluggish. The solution of the parallel RLC circuit is given by Vn is equal to A1 times E to the S1T plus A2 times E to the S2T. And we found S1 and S2 by solving the characteristic equation. 
However, we still need to find A1 and A2. And we will use the initial conditions to find these, specifically the capacitor voltage and inductor current, V0 and I0. Since there is no other voltage source in the parallel RLC branch, the V0 is equal to A1 plus A2. How did I find this? Let's see and find the value of this equation at T is equal to 0. That will be equal to A1 times E to the 0 plus A2 times E to the 0. And according to this will be A1 plus A2. So this equation comes from there. And there is one more unknown. And in order to find that, I will just look to the general equation which I wrote for the system and take the values of this equation at t is equal to 0. So I will have c times dv0 over dt, v0 over r, plus i0 is equal to 0. You might wonder where does this integral term go? But this integral at t is equal to 0 is an integral from 0 to 0, and accordingly, its value is equal to 0. And if I solve this equation for dv0 over dt, I end up with an expression which has both initial conditions. I will use this in order to find A1 and A2. Let's remember our natural response is equal to Vn is equal to A1 times e to the S1t plus A2 times e to the S2t. And if I take the time derivative of that, I end up with this expression. And at t is equal to 0, I already found this expression here. And if I take the value of this expression at t is equal to 0, I end up with a1 times S1 plus A2 times S2. So accordingly, by combining this equation and this equation, I end up with this equation. And here I know from the characteristic equation S1 and S2. I know the initial conditions. I know all the component values. And that way I can write the equation 1 with the only unknowns being A1 and A2. And secondly, I already have another equation, which is V0 is equal to A1 plus A2. And by solving the two equations for the two unknowns, I can find A1 and A2. So when I find A1 and A2, I also have S1 and S2 from the characteristic equation. And I have found all the unknowns for my differential equation and completed the solution of my parallel RLC branch differential equation.